Ryan. Clicking the button. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> we faced it down. Corley Moore, Firehouse Vigilance. This is attempt number three for weekly scrap number 176. Tonight's guest is Christopher Snow. He is the Rogue Tail Board. He is co-founder of the Uncommon Fireman Group. He is the president of the Piney Woods Fools. He labels himself a forever student of the craft. He rides tailboard at Smith County ESDT, ESD2 down in Texas. He is part of the Texas Task Force 2, husband to an unbelievably supporting wife and father of six amazing kids. So, Chris Snow, it's my pleasure to have you on once again, and at this time actually live, uh, Man, here as we my go. guest. Welcome. Honored to be here. Definitely honored to be honest, man. It's a very humbling thing. And if, uh, if you don't mind, do you mind if I open up in prayer, Chief? Go for it, brother. All right. Guy, yeah, just thank you so much for what Chief Moore does for the fire service. I thank you for his platform. Thank you for being able to reach so many firefighters in this modern era to be able to bring them just good sound advice and good tactics that hopefully are applicable to them wherever they're at. But I pray that there's anyone that doesn't know you, that they just have a seed planted in their hearts today and they are able to grow strong in your faith and strong in their walk with you. I pray you just continue to be with us and may you be honored in all this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, let's get rolling. And that is a, out of 176 scraps, that's the first. So congratulations. I, I don't think we've ever that. opened in a prayer before. You got to, brother. That's a, that's a whole part of who I am. You know, you mentioned it going into this, different things to talk about. And uh, my testimony is definitely one of them because without him, I wouldn't be where I'm at with anything. I love and it, I man. used to live a godless life and dealt with depression at a very young age after a heartbreak and a bad breakup. And uh, that turned into some partying. And that party kind of never ended. And some trouble came with that. And I ended up actually homeless out of my truck in some woods for at least three or four months during all this time frame so when you say you started from the bottom really have and um ever since really inviting him into my life and seeking his will and not my will it's just been a blessing ever since and, i'm excited uh, to get into it i yeah. really am i'm gonna do the housekeeping and then we'll launch it let's roll uh anything i missed first of all in the intro anything you would no, like that was to way add? too much of a mouthful anyways man I keep it simple okay. but i'm honored to hear that Audience, please get your questions ready. Throw them at us. It's going to be a good scrap because we've tried to make this happen. This is the third time now. We are going to make it happen. Um, the Vigilantes, if you're not a member of the Vigilantes, go join firehousevigilance.com. Become a part. It's an unbelievably good group. Five bucks a month, five measly dollars, the price of a cup of coffee. And you're a part of the exclusive community, exclusive discounts, exclusive swag, and access to influence the future scraps. Um, with that being said, this episode is brought to you by Key Hose. Check them out on Facebook, The Hose Experts. And of course, there is the affordable drill tower. Firefighter owned and operated. The only thing you can't do on an affordable drill tower is live fire. Affordable drill tower. You can repel, stretch hose lines, go through the stairs, go through the floor, do window bailouts, cut holes in the roof props, use the apartment balconies, pump into the FDC or flow water from the sprinkler system. Call Steve. 844-55-TOWER or drop an in, uh, email to info at affordabledrilltowers.com. So there you go. I also want to mention Next Rung and Flame Decon, two things I love to support every chance I get. So with all that being said, housekeeping out of the way, one more thing I want to mention because it's very important to me is Captain Ryan Nicholson. I want to give him a shout out because when, <laughs> when I traveled to Longview last week, I got to be a guest on the Tailboard Misfit podcast and Ryan was one of the hosts and they sent me a list of questions and I completely stole one of his questions to ask Ben Martin and I wanted to give him a shout out and say I stole the question that I asked from his list and I wanted to acknowledge that and say uh, thank you for providing that question on the scrap but I did want to say it was stolen I did it and it was Ryan Nicholson's question so there it is with all that being said all out of the way we're back to Chris Snow and for those who know me, you know I'm a preacher's son, uh, but The Scrap is not a religious show, I'm, I, but I am a very spiritual person. So Chris prefaced topics he would like to talk about. You already touched on it a little bit, man. It's kind of your testimony. And I wanted to see, uh, uh, basically you wanted to share how God's impacted your life. So you got the reins to kick this off, even though it's something we've never really done before. Sure. Well, my current pastor, he's big on telling us that uh, everyone is a number 
and every number has a story and every story matters to God. And hearing that you apply it to everything. And especially in our line of work, it's, um, I think it's a big deal. I think there's a lot more that honor it and really try and have that fellowship. And maybe some might feel that it's a little pressure or awkward to maybe pray, but everywhere I've, I've been, we're praying, you see them out in public and I just want to make that normal again. You know, let's, it's okay to, to love the job and to love Christ at the same time. They go hand in hand. You know, John Sperry is a big motivating influence of bringing that out in the forefront and Chief Starnes with his thing, man, they're always putting Christ first. And um, like I was saying earlier, I never really did that before and I've reaped the repercussions of it. I was always hitting brick wall and just severe depression from it. And um, I was like, all right, you know, I've done everything my way. Let, I know of you. We weren't necessarily a, a Christian family growing up. Not that we weren't believers. We just went on holidays, you know, Christmas and Easter. And so I started getting a little more prominent in my life, like I was saying. And um, when he finally revealed himself to me, it was just like a, a burden lifting up. And just started to seek his ways. And when I put myself last and put him first, it was like he was making life very clear for me. And the more that I would seek him, the more that he would in return, just share his love and what it is that he's called me to do. But I've never been in the fire service so here a few years ago. We did a lot of blue collar construction, oil field work and stuff like that. And I uh, just went through, you know, recovering from, you know, the party stage and going right into blue collar work. It was um, very challenging to think that there was any kind of profitable future other than just working with my hands. So I figured that that was life and trying to make right. the most of it. And went through a very bad divorce as well through all that. Um, thought I was going to lose my kids, but I ended up getting custody of them. And when I was going through that separation, I was actually a, a bouncer and a bartender at a, a local night joint. And that was the worst place to be when you're coming through a divorce. And so that, that led to some heavy drinking and stuff. And that's actually where I met my current wife. And uh, when I saw her, I was like, she, she doesn't belong here. You know, th this isn't the type that goes to these places. And um, from there, we started talking, and she introduced me to her church. And the first sermon they talked on was the reasonings behind divorce, and all. And it was just like he was talking specifically to me through that. So that's we met each other through that, and then that's where my faith and belief and submission in Christ really strengthened from there. And um, at the time, I was doing like I said construction work, making ninety nine dollars a month had no idea, you know, what life really was about. Wanted to be a fireman. I've done like a week long citizens Academy when I was 16 years old, that really got me a hook, line and sinker with the whole thing. And uh, we were actually on our way to her brother-in-law's house to, or her brother's house to celebrate Thanksgiving as we're freshly dating. We come across this wreck and it was a pretty bad one off in the wood lines of the County road. We stop and I go to look, check it out, see if there's anything inside of good faith. And this fire engine pulls up. There's only two guys on it. A little unnormal, but I was like, okay, maybe this East Texas, maybe smaller fire departments. And I said, if you guys need help, I'm here. I'm willing to help however I can. They said, that's fine. We'll, we'll help you. But obviously, you know, PP and all that stuff. But they gave me support rules to help through that. And after that scene was done, the captain of that, you know, volunteer fire department come to find out, asked if I've ever had interest in this. I said, well, yeah, I'd love to, but there's some things we got to, you know, discuss first. You got a rough past and, you know, I don't know how that looks today. And he said, well, everyone deserves a second chance. So I said, okay, long story short, you had to live in their district to volunteer. And I lived about 15 miles out. So for a year straight, I just kept going to their meetings once a month, their training nights once a month, still working blue collar, um, asked my current wife for her hand in marriage that time but with that her dad wanted us to not live together so i was a single dad of two trying to make all this happen and um a lot of prayers getting me through those times of my life and more or less like i said a few months this went on and it got challenging to continue to see that maybe this is not what he wants me to do but what i want to do and i just asked him to god if i am doing what you want me to do where you just play this one song on the radio on the way to work this morning and stop by a gas station for a guy I asked about that. I was getting coffee. I said, I better go back and see if I actually hear that song. I might miss it. 
And I had the last 30 seconds of that song in. And it was I Can Only Imagine by Mercy Me. And at that time, it was not really played regularly on our Christian station. So I was just overwhelmed, man. And from there, I was like, all right, I'm doing everything that God has called me to do. And um, it's full throttle. So in a nutshell, that's pretty much why I am the way I am through God's love and guidance. And he actually does call people to the fire service. I full heartedly believe that. Wow, bro. Hey, no, I appreciate you sharing it because not a lot of people uh, go public and share that kind of message, that kind of personal story. And uh, it's it's not what the scrap is necessarily about but it's not like the scrap is against it does that make sense what i'm saying right oh yeah no 100 percent. so no beautiful i think a lot of people say an amen beautiful testimony beautiful testimony uh we cannot be ashamed of our faith proud of your public testimony from george robertson jr taylor oh, anderson said yes 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 god does amazing things and you hear the messages you need and are put in the situations meant for you when you are intended for them from the couplings podcast so absolutely taylor uh Beautiful testimony from Marshall Board. Amen. Uh, Boyd, sorry. Brandon hmm. Lane said, Amen. Wow, great story, man, from John McCoy. Do you still have contact with that captain of the volunteer department that brought you in? Oh, absolutely. Um, he is actually a figurehead in our current organization. So every time we get a chance to rub elbows and cross paths, we always talk about, you remember that one rack? I said, man, wouldn't be here without it. So he, he knows I love him. He's listening. I don't Fair know if enough. I got permission to say his name, but... He, he definitely played a pivotal part in my career. I'm going to try and catch you up before stuff leaves because it's sure. already sc- it's already scrolling past me. Chris Snow, my brother. Let's go. One of the best I know from Trevor, somebody. It already, it already scrolled. Garrett Rose said, Snow, my brother. Michael K. Sandala. That's awesome. Keep the faith. Joey Hayes, my man from Key. Evil can't keep the scrap down. I love it, brother. In fact, I'm going to love it right now. It's there awesome, we go. Uh, most selfless and humble human being. That comes from Garrett Rose. Chris Snow is one of the best brothers out there. That comes from Humpy. Humpy himself. Humpy, what's up, bud? Tom Hollick. Here comes your first, technically not the first, but the first question about fire service. How did you come to start the Rogue Tailboard? That comes from Tom Hollick. You might consider him a tall person with a brilliant mustache. Did I lose you? Talk to me, Goose. Sorry, I didn't hear your audio. Here we go. You're back. I'm checking, checking the internet, seeing if I You're can good. All right. Did you hear the question? It's, I just heard the start of it. I didn't hear the finish. Tom Hollick wants to know, how did you come to start the Rogue Tailboard? It's a good question. We were actually talking about that when you are here in Long Beach. So when uh, I finally got my commission and started off in the fire service, the station captain said, so where do you see yourself in, you know, five years and stuff? I said, well, man, I'd love to be here. This is home. I really want to finish where I start. So if I can give you any words of advice, I want you to just nerd out on the fire service. You know, we've got YouTube. There's all kinds of social media pages to keep your passion alive. Just just go see what you see and see what fits you. I don't even know where I started or found it, but fully involved. This is full credit to Mark Von Appen on that one because um, he had one of his earlier blogs about, you know, being rogue and what that meant. Usually that's a negative term, almost derogative. But the way he articulated, I know I'm paraphrasing, excuse me, but more or less that fight against complacency, you know, if, if you want to say we're rogue for going out there, an hour of workout, whatever it is, but no one else wants to, they would rather just be comfortable on shift doing what they do, then that's what rogue meant. And so I said, I like that. And so I said, well, maybe I need to start an accountability page for myself and I'll just put my thought like a public journal, so to say, I know that might sound weird. But uh, with all my kiddos, I figured social media is going to be around for a while, and they can see what their dad was thinking and experiencing through fire service in a, a weird format way like that. And so I just started sharing personal messages to myself, and um, it quickly gained a lot of traction. I had no idea that was even going to occur. So that's where that kind of came about. And then a good friend of mine, when I was showing him, you know, we still work together, I mean, you should start a podcast and, you know, actually start, you know, recording talker so uh so anyways that came to life and that actually gained a lot of following so that's when i saw that god really blessed me with a big responsibility here because people are listening and um if you're not matching your talk then it's just irrelevant and gonna see through so and um 
so rock and roll. And I got a couple other guys that are helping me with that on too. You know, Ken Snyder and Kelsey Trotter, they help give me some content on there. So you'll see that. And it's a blessing to be able to have that because it maybe allowed me to network with a bunch of individuals I can now call brothers that are states away. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Audience, keep me posted because I'm hyper paranoid about the internet connection and things like oh, that. Oh, me so too. Just... I'm sweating bullets over it. <laughs> no doubt, man. You got <laughs> stuck in the, the hot seat because. But uh, Ian Schultz wants to know Snow. Into the Uncommon Fireman, and what are your goals with these projects? So, what up, Schulte? I'm going to tell him he's one of the other uh, co owners of the Uncommon Fireman LLC. So, he's the logistical brain behind it all. But, well, like I said, through the Rogue Tail Boy, that was an open platform to meet a lot of other individuals. And um, the OG workout share, as I'm going to call him, is Shannon Jimenez out of there. His workouts he was doing. Well, then he tagged a few other guys. So, I mean, how cool is this? This Georgia brother is, you know, sharing workouts that he's doing is giving me good ideas. And then from there, it just kept going on for a few times. And then someone joked – with me about are all you going to do is just post firefighter workouts and I said, well thought to myself maybe i should just create a, a group for us and big influence of mine is david goggins just his mindset his outlook and how he just continues to push himself so that's where the uncommon fireman came from you know being uncommon amongst uncommon people kind of wordplay you know firefighters are looked at as you know uncommon in society the last right. few good men and stuff like that so if we're already in there, let's be uncommon in that uncommon group, and let's let's focus on our faith, let's focus on our family values and fitness and training, and just being the absolute best we can for selfless reasons. Right on. Right that's on. I love that. Out. I love that uncommon amongst uncommon, like that really I is. On the head with that. <laughs> when you so catch that's... yourself, uh, sorry, Andrew McGinn wants to know when you catch yourself slacking on the job, what do you do to get yourself back? at it personally personally just go through the motions um not sound as cliche as possible but just knowing it has to be done it's not an option anymore and when you have some life mentors um i'm, I'm gonna mention him. matt mcgee he's a big mentor of mine on this and he'll he'll text me and it's like accountability check and he'll say what's going on how are things what are you doing and just continuously push me to do that and ultimately the other thing that keeps me driven on that is the fact that if I otherwise my words mean nothing and my whole testimony is just tarnished so that's just uh how I keep myself motivated you know not going to say every day is 90 to nothing because your body will break down and it will cause yourself to rest even if you don't want to but on those days just do like a, a light ruck or something to that extent it doesn't necessarily have to be extremely vigorous but just something every day. You know, we're only allotted so much time with our life and as important as the body is to us, even outside the fire series, trying to do your best to take care of it. Okay. I love this. And it's what the reason I titled the scrap this three times, by the way, three times, yeah. <laughs> but being a forever student of the game, man, I love the way you phrase that. And I want to know what that means to you. I mean, it's just that chief. Um, you know, we all hear the stories and the different things that people share about, well, if you're 20 years in, what have you done with that? You know, you start in your rookie year 20 years in a row or vice versa. But in the most applicable way for me, I look at the calls that I receive here where I work and they're very sporadic. Uh, there's no really cookie cutter call, so to say. Everyone is extremely challenging. And then, you know, like Ramaga said, here's the red pill and just going to show you rabbit holes after rabbit holes. And once I learned about that and when our, you know, modern fuel starts to off gas and why that's important and just dissecting everything, it's it's just this huge array of knowledge that is no way you're just going to retain it in, you know, one fiscal year or whatever, just reading everything. you got to continuously apply that. Not to mention it's always ever changing. You know, your building construction is getting weaker. It's just slapped together. You know, your cars are getting more complex. I mean – even on medical calls and stuff like that, overdoses and just different designer drugs that interact differently with the bodies. And it's all just a big puzzle. So 
you've got to learn these things. Um, I don't feel that we could be 100% adequate for our citizens if we just rely on our past experiences from calls. Nice. You know, if, if I never learn anything outside of what I ran last tour, then how can I say I'm being better for them for the next call? And there's there's no excuse anymore either on that. No doubt. And no doubt. This, Preach it. Preach I mean, it. you got – this is – like I said, I'm a – it's a young tenured man in the service that's got his eyes aware to this. And you see what's going on in the fire service in general with as many training opportunities that are presented to you. Um, a lot of them, especially they're from Fool's Chapters locally, it's, it's free or of little charge. Or it might cost you a tank of gas to and from to get there, but it's worth it. And I can firsthand say that. And so those that choose not to or say that, well, if my organization doesn't provide it for me, I don't see the need in doing it. Well, no matter how jam up your organization is, they can't provide everything due to red tape or whatever the case is or whatever the time crunch on their logistical plans. But you've got individuals that are willing to say, hey, just come over and spend the day with us, man. Let's go do some hood rat stuff and let's go flow some water. Let's let's go practice VES and live fire conditions and let's just let's work on that. Well, I just don't see why you wouldn't want to take an opportunity to engage in that at least once or twice. Right on, man. All right, tons of questions coming at you. Are you ready for all oh, of them? Let's no, no, that. it's good, man. There's good. I want to, uh, man. I want to hit Jeremy Sanders, and I want to hit. Uh, oh, Jeremy. Uh, yeah, Crew First Culture wants to know from Jeremy Sanders. It sounds like you've got a great handle on finding your purpose. How important do you think it is to find your purpose and use it to make an impact on others? I think it's very important. Um, ooh, that's a good one, Jeremy. That, that man right there, I got to tip my hat out to him. He was pioneer for me on this whole navigating through this stuff, too, this extra side of the fire service. Dude, one of the but, best um, people around, period. Yes. You just, can you repeat that? I lost you for a second. Run it back. Are you there? Oh, no, I lost your sound. Can you hear me? Talk to me, talk to me, audience. Can can you hear us both? Can you know what There we go. Okay, so how did I get a handle? Uh, I'll read it to you again. I'm scrolling. It sounds like you've got a great handle on finding your purpose. How important do you think it is to find your purpose and use it to make an impact on others? Okay, I think it's very important, honestly, because if you don't know your purpose, then what are you doing? You know, do we just wake up with no plan and no agenda, uh, especially in this line of work where everything is critical? that we do it's not just you know not to knock any other trades but there's a lot riding every time we clock in so if you haven't found your purpose specifically even in the fire service it's one going to make your job challenging but two it's going to be extra challenging to try and be that mentor or if you're in tenure you know 10 plus years how are you able to mentor someone if you don't know what it's like to even be mentored or you don't have a grip so i think it's extremely important love it man love it purpose crew first culture purpose <laughs> uncommon fireman purpose there's a theme i'm, I'm catching a theme okay uh, God, i wanted good. to get this was an older question i'm trying to scroll to it tom hollick you mentioned it again that's Here a tall man chief what does setting the standard mean to you this comes from <laughs> i don't remember who asked it the first oh nate Sturm asked it the first time chief man saying i you know i've toyed with that every time i've asked a guest on my show too yeah, I just, Tom crushed it. I, I'm going to have to really piggyback without being cliche. The citizens set the standard. Yes. I mean, we might think we're doing the best we can, and we think we're we're all that and very competent, but then we fumble and screw up, and the citizens look like, man, I thought y'all were better than that. You know, or just talking to them out in public when you're sitting there getting groceries one night. What do you expect out of us? You know, to save me at all costs, or uh, to be some wise at your job, to be in fit. That's how you find out what setting the standard is. And I do like to have high standards. It's part of, you know, my upbringing with sports and everything else. And my dad is, if if you think everyone says here is your standard, you need to be here. And so that's not in an arrogant, egotistical way, but it's a, you, you deserve to be the best that you can be. So set your standard accordingly. Love it. And... There is no shame ever when you have great guests on your shows and taking their answers. Okay. After 175 scraps, I will take a great answer any day. Absolutely. Just sharing all, that you have to, all I do. 
just got to give him a tip of the hat, man. But Tom crushed it. Yeah. So so and then to say and to acknowledge the great answer, man, a hundred percent. I yes. will tip the hat to both of you. Um, what keeps you from getting burnt out and diving so deep into the fire service? What keeps you from getting burnt out from diving so deep into the fire service? Bob Sandra is asking. Honestly, Bob, it's a good question, but that's my wife. That's an easy one to answer. Mm, nice. Um, she she definitely holds it down here. I think firewives are unsung heroes that don't get enough recognition. Um, I don't think they truly – understand what goes into marrying a fireman until they are married to a fireman for an extended period of time and see that it's not just a two-year phase or whatnot and um so she really humbly reminds me too of, okay that's enough you know you're you're good you got your workload you're not really stressing over the top it's not all at once but we need you too just as much as you're there for them and she really she keeps me humble on that so yeah, i love um, it my wife, definitely. That's a great I did not expect that answer either because normally it's like uh, – it's almost like a struggle to keep the balance, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. as opposed to, the, uh, as opposed to the, the spouse being the fuel, which I, I definitely – if anybody knows me and Amanda, I, I definitely get to enjoy that, which not everybody has that dynamic. So uh, kudos to Mrs. Snow. Oh, yeah. I'm throwing down um, – someone said, stoked the scrap finally happened and I get to watch it live too. Uncommon Fireman has helped me keep me motivated, and I'm happy to have been added to the page by a friend. Thanks for being the man up front for this, brother. That came from Jedediah Gregory. So, That's what it's about, man. It's about, it's about everyone else. The second it becomes you, man, you might as well reevaluate your whole priorities. It's, uh, that's what it's about. I'm throwing. I'm th- I'm, I'm, there was one I just saw that I wanted to throw at you. I liked it. I'm, I'm scrolling, guys. Uh, yeah, it's right here. Being a forever student. This this comes from Caleb Daniel Smith. Being a forever student, if you had to pick the top three classes you're excited for, what would they be? I, I hate Ooh. these questions, and I love these questions. You know oh, what I'm saying? I know. I got such a long bucket list, Chief. I'm, I'm very busy plugged in here. It, it's almost a rare moment. I get to go out and, and partake in all these other wonderful things. So it, you're planned endeavors for sure. Um you know, bears of the oath right out the gate, the way that they just conduct their trainings and you, you hear the stories of those that have come back from their, their classes and the wealth of knowledge and more importantly, the, the brotherhood being strengthened going to those things, I think is detrimental. Uh, you know, you talked about Shane, he's mentioned before, if you follow any of the things he's been on is the realistic training and why that is important. And um, the training under stress, you know, because that all changes. You can suit up. All right, guys, we're going to go out there. We're going to stretch hose for a little bit. We're going to throw some cones out, do some mock offsets. Well, when we do that, some of us may have full gear on. Some of us may have our pants on. And um, you just grab the line on your shoulder and you just kind of jog to it. But then when you fully pack out and you get a good heart rate up and you're stressed, you do some, you know, physical exercises beforehand, that changes, and I learned that myself. I fumbled so much more when I started to actually implement that kind of stress-induced training just because, well, man, I, I would always grab that minute man like it was golden. I would never fumble, you know, with the pro bar trying to, you know, force my gap and stuff like that, but now I'm tired and I'm exhausted and I'm trying to work that out. It's a whole game changer, and to me, that's what they all say is that really does matter when it's 3 a.m. So classes like that, um, that's a big one. Wit is still a big weakness of mine just because we have minimal training on it, just due to props and stuff like that within our organization, still get great familiarization with our writ bag and the protocols and the reasonings, but actually hands-on type stuff. Um, definitely would be excited to take a lot of that. And that's the thing with the chief is all these skills are detrimentally important. You yes. know, you, I don't think you can have one without the other. No, without a doubt. And we have so many uh, hats to wear, so many skills to be good at, so many core competencies and fundamentals and basics to try and get the reps in on right. and man, it's a tough, it's a tough, uh, it, it takes an extreme amount of fortitude commitment to get it done, man. Caleb, I love you, buddy. I hope that answered your question. Absolutely. Pulling up the notes, getting them back up here. Uh, <clears throat> hate and doubt from the naysayers. Talk to me. Talk to you on that. Um, I wish that we could record what we talked about when you were here in Longview, Chief, because that's exactly what that was. You know, they used to, this might be unpopular, but 
I used to be the big uh, FTM, you know, mantra with things. And then there's a certain chief who is no longer with us, Chief Baxter, really opened up my eyes to this concept. It was just like a, a wow. It almost made me feel really guilty for even, you know, throwing stones at much, so to say. But um, he said, we hear about all this FTM, I'm paraphrasing. And so those that know exactly what he said, please forgive me, I'll butcher it. But in a nutshell, he said, love them, you know, love the mutts. You know, they're just your brother just as much and vice versa. You know, you love them. If they hate and they doubt, that's, we, it's your psychological guy too. So I think you can respect this. There's a deep underlying issue that usually comes from stuff like that. And we just see this surface face value lashing of it. I don't know why people want to hate and doubt people for whatever their motives are. Um, can it be discouraging? Yes. Can it drain you of energy? Absolutely. But do you still have a job to do? 100%. And sometimes that have to involve those guys that are saying the, the negativity? Absolutely. But they're your brothers. Um, whether you're wearing the same patch or not, we're all in the fire service. So as far as I'm concerned, we all fall underneath that umbrella. Um, so that's where I started to take a stand, too, and just be more positive. And, you know, you still get flashful at times. It still hurts when things are thrown your way that are absolutely falsified or sure. whatever the case may be. But, you know... If they decide to stop that or see, okay, well, maybe I can be doing something a little better. And I'm just mad at this guy for exposing it to me unintentionally. And then they reach out for the help. So you just embrace them with a big hug and you just bring them in. And um, so that's how you, that's how I'm learning to deal with it. And it wasn't always like that. Don't get me wrong. I right, right. usually got pretty fired up over it. Uh, it's just no longer worth it. You know, when you see the bigger picture and, you really consider the source and the reason behind the source. You just, you know, that's them. But the day that stops or what have you, that's not going to stop me anymore from continuing to be the best I can for my community. And that's, that's all I got to say on that one. Really. Dude, that's, that's a great answer. People are saying, Caleb said, great answer, brother. Tom. Whether you're wearing the same patch or not, we're all on the same team. Need more of this. Preach it, brother. Christopher Snow comes from Josh Britton. Uh, John Velez Jr. said ego and insecurity. And Don Sapp, man, uh, Ooh, Uncle Don said, done. see you in March, brother, with some sunglasses on, on his emoji. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. Chief Baxter always does that. You'll see more soon, man. Uh, no doubt about it. Uh, yeah. Absolutely, man. Great, great message. And like you said, it's so easy to say FTM and drop the mic. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But uh, that's not the point. The point is brotherhood, and we have to have respect, and we have to have grace. Because when we, when we lose sight of those, man, we become chippy and we start to entrench and we start to attack and everybody loses. The fire service right. loses. And that, you know, piggybacking off that real quick, Chief, uh, Hit it. Brother, that's another buzz phrase we're all aware of. Maybe that word's been beaten down like a dead horse, but you always hear, oh, the brotherhood doesn't exist or this or that. I don't know what brotherhood these individuals are talking about or what their definition of brotherhood is, you know. God willing to, to Ben right now. He's one of our firemen. He just came over a, a really bad wreck, and it was a miracle that he got out of it and released so quickly from the hospital. Uh, new individual into our organization, the fire services general, and he got to experience a statewide taste of brotherhood, him and his family both, from our association and association hours away of where this wreck and, you know happened, and just to see it come together, and then to see our newly appointed fire chief make his way out there that long of the drive Man, but that's on a local level. Brotherhood is for sure alive and well. Um, I just I don't see what these individuals are talking about. I'm gonna so. try and get you to back up like six inches because I think you're overwhelming the. Yeah, try that. Okay. Talk there. Okay, I'm a leaner. Is this better? I think so. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. Okay. I'm adjusting the volume up to modify for your depth, but maybe it won't. It's 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 not bad. It's just basing out. It's kind of getting I got that. You. Like a bad sound system on an old Toyota. Like working off the laptop. I don't have a mic or anything <laughs> like that. No, you're good. Again, man, I'm just trying to. Uh, this is the uh, what do you call it? Uh, the ghetto mixer. What do you say? <laughs> Lean back a little bit. Okay, there. That's better. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you, Chief. You got your back. Um, hitting the notes. Uh, circle of influence. Talk to me about the importance. Excuse me, as I burp, of the circle of influence. Oh, no, extremely important. That's one thing my battalion chief currently talks about too is, you know, don't drink the juice. 
you know, well, what, let's look at what juice is. What What is he referring to? And so breaking that down, there's a lot of things, and I know we see it. I'm just trying to figure out a good way to articulate it. But um, your circle of influence ultimately decides how you conduct and what you perceive to be the ultimate way. And uh, that's whether it be in life or the fire, you know, any aspect of what you're involved in, your circle of influence is absolutely important. Um, just like for me, instance, my faith is really huge. So if I have a circle of influence of a bunch of non-believers, I don't see how that can help better one, my faith or my outlook because it's constantly clashing. And even if you go through conversations of trying to understand the side, if you don't have that fundamental ground level to agree upon, I don't think it's going to be a, a prosperous circle of influence. Um, that means you can't learn something from somebody, but as a right. continuous factor to pour into yourself, it can do more harm than good. Um, and ultimately, it's, you know, I base a lot of the things on, you know, your morals and ethics. And right. as long as those are lined up and very transparent, you know, I'd like to say I'm full of integrity because I'm always trying to do the right thing regardless when you click up those kind of individuals, you have that common sense to agree upon. Then you start learning about the fun off topics of your crew or whatnot, or, okay, well, maybe they all like football and stuff like that. I'm personally not a, a big fan. I couldn't tell you who's on what team, but if they like it, that's cool. I'm down. We can watch a game. You know, we can do that. But as far as the actual influence goes, it's really keeping, a, keeping you in check. You know, it goes back to the accountability. And if you think you don't need a circle of influence, I would uh, would encourage you to really reconsider that. Because, again, I, I lived a life where I just listened and knowing about myself, and it was very detrimental. It had a lot more damage than it ever did good. And uh, you always need that one person to talk to and to truly confide in. And, um, you know, Shane Bentley is a huge, huge one of that, that, that kind of built my circle of influence, to be honest with you. Took me in under his wing right out the gate. He said, come here, old son. I'm going to tell you what's what. And old we son. just started talking. <laughs> and uh, he said, well, I need, you, I need you to talk to this guy. So he sent me a, a number. I was like, okay, cool. 30 minutes goes by. No, he's like waiting for your call right now. I need you to call him. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. So they just piggy trailed. And then you see, man, all these guys are just so humble to the heart and just so full of life knowledge, just willing to give to somebody. Yeah, I'm, I'm a sponge on it, you know, soak it up. What can I learn from you? You know, that kind of ties back into the forever student mindset. We're always learning. So circle of influence is extremely important. Love it, man. Spinning back around. Everybody, if I haven't got to your question, please do not be afraid to repost it. They're scrolling by. They do scroll by quickly. And after a certain bit, they go away and I can't get back to them. So don't be afraid to repost a question. It's not spam. Have fun doing it. Uh, <laughs> Training and staying fit for the job, man. I know physical fitness is a big part for you, but training and staying fit for the job. In fact, I'm going to hit you with the vigilante question of the week. Uh, and this one comes from Michael Ramirez. Uh, he says, you're into fitness as most of us are. Uh, and I think when he says most, I think he's including like the 1%, not, not like most really? firefighters. So uh, we beat our bodies to death with training, working out, and sometimes lack of sleep. What does your recovery look like and what do you do to take care of your body to recover and get back at it again? So the simplest way I can probably put that is short bursts of high intensity, but long durations of either lower frequency or recovery at the same time. Um, on shifts, you know, I'm 48 hours and we, our house predominantly for the most part does stay busy. And so we, we do, have those moments and then the running joke is anytime I go out in the bay to work out we're gonna pop a call and that's honestly always been proven true but uh going back to what Caleb Smith said once when I had him as a guest the more that he does that over a period of time the more he's building his reserve tank up and so he's able to do that to where he might be 30 40 minutes into a, a pretty good workout and catch a first do burner but he's just warmed up where someone that hasn't approach that type of mentality they think that he would be gassed and not good for the job but in reality he's still not out working as an egotistical man but he's still heavily engaged in swapping bottles and, and making things happen being an asset because he's took the self-discipline to get him to that level and when he told me that that really resonated and so 
without a, a long answer to that question, it's really about what you do on your off time too, Chief. You know, we I've got four days off to recover. You know, I've got a football team here at the house, so to say, with all my kiddos from 10 to 2 months old, 11 to 2 months old. And they all want daddy time. They all, right. so it's high energy all the time. Uh, it's understanding that day one, let's keep it as chill as possible. And then day two, three, and four, let's go run the errands. Let's go do what it is we got to do. But if you can just give daddy at least half of this one day, I'll be there the rest of the time. I'm still engaged. Don't get me wrong. It's not like I go in my room and do not disturb. Right. It's just, uh, we're going to be very low key and get that. So that is a big part to plan my recovery, eating right, staying hydrated. Um, if I do have an alcoholic beverage, it's very seldom. It's like very seldom just for the sake of what it does to you the next day. If you continue to do that to the next day and that's, you're not ever fully recovering because you're, you're staying in that kind of state of just grogginess and you still have that in your system as it's trying to digest while getting too scientific. But it's just making wise decisions on your off time. And, um, uh, Honestly, just being peaceful. If you, you, you know, your mental health goes into that a big part too. I've been learning that here recently, and um, being as stress free as possible. So find those things that make you stress free, and engage on those, and it helps just bring everything else down to like a, a core balance, so to say. If that makes sense. No, it makes sense completely, man. It's a great, great answer, brother. It's a great, great answer. The balance combined with just uh, intentionality is just a solid recipe for success and to stay consistent. You know, mm -hmm. I have a saying, which is consistency over intensity. Although there's right. nothing wrong with intensity. It's just, you gotta, you gotta have the consistency or the intensity doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know? um, again, I'm a huge fan of intensity. Uh, I love this question. It's getting a lot of comments in the, in the, uh, I can't even keep up because it's getting so, uh, so many, uh, Here, I'm trying to find it. It keeps scrolling. How can a new guy from Jasper Miller, how can a new guy to the fire service not get caught up into the negativity that surrounds them? Rather, stay humble and positive with a willingness to learn. Mm. That is a deep one, man. I'm curious to see what others are chiming in on that, too. Oh, there's quite I'm a bit. There's myself. quite a bit, yeah. <laughs> so, I can read some well, of them to you, but go ahead. All right, well, I'll, I'll give my, my go at it with how I would honestly take that. You know, you got to put yourself back in that new man's shoes for a minute. You know, some of it might be a little sooner than later as far as that time went on. But you're, you're the new guy on in the fire service. And you have all your high expectations of what the fire service means and all that. And now you have your assigned crew. Maybe you, you quit the floating around. You've got your, your full station assignment. You are there. And this is who I'm going to be spending a third of my life with for at least a couple of years before promotions, all that minimum. And right out the gate, it might, I don't know, it might be different for everyone, but if you're hit with that negativity right out the gate, you're going to have to find a way to truly be patient and hopefully find common ground with at least one of those guys. Because if you can't find common ground or be able to make peace with anyone on your crew, and you know it's nothing that you are contributing to that problem, so to say. Because I'd have to look at that. Well, if, I'm, if it's something I did or said right off the rip and gave a horrible first impression, I've got to at least have this quote-unquote hard conversation, but it's just a conversation. Hey, did I do something, guys? You know, not trying to sound insecure, but is, if this is based upon this, what did I do? What can we do to fix it? Or if it's just the bantering of, oh, well, our department needs to do this or so-and-so on that shift. You know, if they have time to be that negative, then you've got time to learn that rig or you've got right. time to do something else instead. And I would just casually separate myself from that situation. And then if it becomes obvious to where you're approached by the senior man or lieutenant, you're like, well, how can we always bounce in every time we have phone or conversations? You know, with respect to say, well, lieutenant, to be honest with you, I, I'm not a fan of those topics. Nothing against what you guys are doing, but I have no input. I'm brand new here. You know, right. and so I, I can't really comment on this, so I feel it's unnecessary I sit in on this conversation. But you want to talk about this or that or go over this or that that's completely a 180 from what you're bashing on, then, yeah, let's engage and let's go and teach me. Right on, you know, man. That's what I would say. No, it's good. Bam, brother, solid advice. And I'll, 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 I'll try to pick out some here if I can keep it from scrolling. 
Uh, Adam Melkai said, surround yourself with other like-minded firefighters, good, solid human beings who are into the job. If they aren't at your station or on your shift or at your fire department, seek them out. That's huge. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I'm trying to keep up. How can a new guy to the fire? Yeah, there it is. Uh, one person, John McCoy said, keep scrapping, get with Corley, Romagus, Chief Ike, Andy Starnes. Those guys, those guys will keep your mind where it needs to be. Yes. Which I get included in the, that group. Yeah. That's, that's super humbling. And it, can't, awesome. it can't rain forever, chief. Uh, seek out the guys at your fire department who aren't stuck in the muck and more of negativity. If you can't find them at your job, find them at neighboring departments and spend time with them. Talk with them, train with them. Man, 100%. This is good advice coming at you. Oh, yes. No doubt. Uh, Matt McGee said, Christopher Snow, what's up, brother? I'll see you at work. I had to throw that in there. Oh, that's an awesome story. That's his to share, man. That's a new ideology mindset. See you at work. Okay. And, uh, man, I, Matt, forgive me if I butcher it. You're going to have to go ahead and put it in the comments. But we were talking in... Uh, he was saying that, you know, someone he knows is like, man, you're always working, you know, on, on the clock or whatever. You're always working. And he said, you know what? They're, they may not participate, but they're always watching. And hopefully you'll see them at work. And so it's just one of those, I'll see you at work. Whether I work with you or not, your work will get noticed. So I want to see you at work. So see, see you, you at work. work. I like it, man. Hopefully I did that justice, Matt. And now we got the backstory. Uh, mental health from past experience and how it's okay to not be okay and to mm. humble yourself and admit that you need help, man. I, uh, man, it's, the, mental health is very, very near and dear to me. And you know, if you've, if you've seen any of my classes where I talk about rats at various times, but, yeah. uh, mental health, man, we got to look out for each other, but I want to, I want to get your take on uh, your story and, and what you are willing to share and, and speak about. No, absolutely chief. And like, I briefly touched on, there towards the beginning, you know, when I was in that party stage dealing with depression in all the wrong ways, you know, as a graduated high schooler, um, yeah, I did have some, some substance abuse issues and because I was coping in all the wrong manners and that ultimately burned bridges and led me to where I was. I a hundred percent own up to that. But at the time there's just those moments to where you have those clarities of, I mean, here I am with absolutely nothing but I was too stubborn and did not want to admit that I needed the help that I continued to choose to run from it. And, you know, ultimately God did give me his attention. Like I said, from there, you know, I found, found a woman, um, you know, I married her. And then that, that was just a toxic thing without sparing details too much on that one. It was just very bad divorce and bad marriage to begin with. And I could say that uh, emotional abuse is very, very real. You know, it doesn't matter how big or burly you are, if you can only take so much from a five foot, 220 pound lady, so to say, that doesn't feel the way you feel and you can't make it feel the way you feel with love and um, hurtful things. And it became almost like a stranger, but you got children trying to do the right things together. One of those. And so seven years is just that in and out of that type of handling and being talked to and treated that way while trying to do all the right things and provide Right. That takes a, a toll, and you, you really start to second-guess yourself, like, what am I doing wrong? Right. And so from, from personal experiences, uh, like you shared with your class, you know, talking about the more tornado, the more you talk about it, the more it, it becomes better. And that yes. really hit home with me when you said that, Chief. And so you, you can't be afraid. And I was afraid for a while because not that I had an image that pulled, but I guess I was afraid of honestly facing it. Right. And so I just kept carrying baggage and I forgot who gave me this analogy. But when you start off on life, you have this backpack and every so often on this trail, you're going to pick up a rock of burden and you're going to put it in that backpack. If you don't ever let go of those rocks, it's going to be overloaded and it's just going to be overwhelming as you continue to walk down your journey. And you're unnecessarily making things much more difficult on you by bearing the weight you're not supposed to be bearing. And um, it's okay to not be okay. And Chief Stern talks about that a lot too. Yes. I'm fortunate enough to be in a, a Bible group and a, a thread with these individuals where we pour into one another and just share godly words of wisdom for, for males. And um, there's a lot to learn from that. But do seek the help if you need it. And like I said, there's no shame in it. And there's, you'd be surprised how many people are walking around not okay with a fake face on. 
Right on. And when I started to really see that, it became very humbling. And um, everyone's hurting. Yeah, everyone's got their own damage, especially in this line of work. We Some of them just are really great at masking it than others. And some are very honest, open, and transparent about it. And, you know, that, that's okay, too. But um, do seek the help if you need it. Because you're going to bleed on everyone that loves you if you don't. And you're going to burn bridges. And some of them are going to take a long time to burn for because they absolutely love you so much. But at some point for them as a human, they can only take so much. And if you don't want the help, unfortunately, you're never going to get it. Right on. So that's a big part too. You got to be willing to get the help. No, hundred percent. And you know, uh, and you know, it's near and dear to my heart. We got to look out for each other, man. We have Absolutely. to look out for, we, we owe it to each other to look out for each other. And I love Paul Combs, man. No mm. one captures the American fire service better than his, um, the, his artistic talents, but the one where the guy's got the sign around his neck says, I'm thinking about killing myself, you know, and it's just, you know, the guy's looking at it. That's such a powerful, uh, and it says, if only the signs were this obvious or something along those lines, forgive right. me, Paul, if I butcher your, uh, uh, <laughs> your drawing with my description. No, you're absolutely right. I've had some friends chief that were outside of the fire service, could never tell nothing was wrong. And then you hear that they, they took their lives over the weekend. Right. Right. You're like, I was just supposed to hang out with them. What, right. what happened? They never tell you. So as much as people don't get annoyed by your circle that tells you or ask you if you're okay. If you're okay, you're man. Afraid, don't be afraid to say, hey, I'm not okay. If you if you get that itch, that inkling, like, man, man is everything okay with this guy? If you get any sort of like, like sixth sense, shadow tickle, whatever, man, man, dig in. Dig in. You owe it. We owe it to each other to dig in. Like, I can't stress this enough, man. Just say, are you okay? Is everything good? You need to talk, brother. You need to talk, yeah. sister. Talk to me. Right? Mm-hmm. And and I promise you, uh, if it comes from your heart, then it will not be, you are not prying. You are not, uh, people need it, man. Everybody needs it. So, yeah. Can you me? All right. Sorry. No, you're good. I love you get, it. Get me going. Uh, <laughs> pulling up the notes. Uh Mental health, yes, actually, we got the vigilante question. So we'll move to books, book sure. or books, to suggest that firefighters should be reading. Okay. Um, so I, I mentioned this when you were down here, but I actually got the hard copy now. This is Mansfield's Book of Manly Men. That's my three-year-old's little signature, so don't worry about that part. Right on. But, um, you know, more or less in a nutshell, Chief, this is about, you know, how – culturalize the modern western world is and Stephen Mansfield decides to say it's okay to be a, a masculine man of God and gives references to the different men of God in the Bible and how powerful they were when they came from such nothing and um, powerful in the fact that they stood firm in their beliefs and values and didn't cower or falter because it was unpopular with whatever town they were in because they weren't against that Right so on. it's just a really good book. Um, it really brought a lot of peace, knowing that it's okay to love God and, and, and be a man and do man things without having to seem egotistical or, or you know, t- toxic, mat, whatever they want to call that, toxic masculinity, I guess. But that's a good book. Uh, I do recommend that one. No, the, and, the, uh, the, the name stuck out to me because it was Mansfield's book of manly men. And it's yeah, a bunch a, of mans in there, right? <laughs> there's, that's a good name. Go ahead. No, it was definitely a good one. And then... Uh, your know, daddy gave me a really good book. I don't know if any of y'all have got the chance to read it or had a copy of it, but The Mission, The Men, and Me. Absolutely solid. There's so many gold nuggets in that, yes. Chief. Just And that's in that priority, you know, the mission. Once you find your mission, you know what you got to do. And then on your mission, you're going to usually have a team. And if you're, whether you're formal, informal leadership on that or just a influential role on that team, they come before you. And you it's just an, an awesome way to bring home the fact that you are last to others if you are going to be a servant of any kind. You know, you, you can't be a, a servant and say that your priorities come before someone else's. Right on. So I love right that. On. And I do love that book. Mission Men to Me is one of my, it's in my top, I'd say, I'm trying to think, top dozen, top ten. It's it's up there, man. It's in there. Oh, yes. So no, That's a good one. All right, so. moving, pulling up, making sure I still got you because you're frozen to me. I'm not sure if you're frozen to everybody. Talk to me. 
Yeah, your your audio is great. All right, now you came back. Okay, your, just checking. Your screen is back. Still hear you on beat. I mean, this is the one time I can say my internet is like super solid. It's like no dropped frames. Everything is rocking along. The numbers look good. So nice. I have a thing I've been doing for 176 episodes or so, and it is the five questions for firefighters. We move to the next five questions for firefighters, and soon I don't know what the I don't I don't want to call it the next next. So it has to have some sort of catchy, like the third set of questions for firefighters or something. Maybe, maybe something. We'll figure it out. Uh, scrappers start thinking about it. Vigilantes start thinking about it. We need we need the name for the next five. Not to mention the next five, which it's kind of hard to come up with good questions. But it doesn't matter. The questions are here. There are no correct answers. There's just your opinions, and the points are arbitrary assigned by me and the guests or the audience. So, with all that being said. Chris Snow, the Uncommon Fireman, the Rogue Tailboard. Are you ready for the five questions, the next five questions for firefighters? Let's go, Chief. It's going to be fun. Number one, numero uno. What single characteristic makes the difference between a run-of-the-mill firefighter and the top-tier go-to badass firefighter? That humble servant that's got his priorities in line. And I say that in the fact that if their priorities are in line, that means that they're doing everything they need to do to be competent in all aspects of life they're called to be competent in. That's as a spouse, as a parent, as a crew member, whatever your your position is within the fire service, that you take that as a high priority and you're going to execute everything on that. But you're also a selfless servant because you're putting others before yourself at all times and it's not about you at all you're just a small part of it and you're approachable enough to guide those that you know guided you pretty much so that's what it is to me there's been so many gold ones like man i don't know how you could ever answer that because they're all they all have a good thing but to me that's that's what stuck out of my head is that no, right that's there? why I love, that's pre- that's really why i love the questions that don't have right answers Right. You know, and I really do because it's about your opinion, dude. And if you, if anybody knows me, like humility is such a big deal for me. Humility, respect, mm-hmm. and, and grace. And, uh, dude, you just, yeah, humble. It, I don't think it, you can drive that home enough, chief. No, you can't. I think, I think humility fixes everything in the, in the, in the fire service, maybe in the world. I don't know. Uh, okay. as far as human beings are concerned, let's put it that way. In the human realm, humility fixes everything. So, max points. For number one. Number two, if you could go back in time and give yourself one piece of advice as a rookie, what would it be? I was thinking about how I answer this one, and I, I summed it up with this, Chief. You got to believe in yourself as much as you believe in others. And a quick, I guess, I want to hear it. of that is you believe in your lieutenant to trust you right, and you believe in your crew members and everyone else to be who they need to be. But you also need to be able to believe in yourself that you can execute it. Cause you're going through a whole bunch of brand new things you've never been through in life. And you can be timid, you can be scared, full of anxious, but if you don't believe in yourself, then it's hard for you to execute that stuff. Nice. No, I know. My answer on that one. I know. I know some people that need to hear that man. hundred percent. I like the answer. I've never heard that answer before either. And if, and, I like it when I like it when answers make me think and say, "Is this true? Or is this not true? Do I agree with this? Do I not agree with this? And do I believe in that lieutenant as much as I need to?" I'm going to give you max points just for the sheer amount of uh, mystery that you created in my own mind as I contemplated your answer. So, hey, when you tell me you're a psychological man, I said we're going to get along then because we we can dive deep. <laughs> no doubt, deep. dude. And that yeah. Uh, what is number three? What is your favorite training drill? Ooh, favorite train drill. Well, my current crew is probably going to ridicule me if I don't say this, but it's a confidence course I built. And every time I go through it, I try and one-up it, make it one more difficulty, one more difficulty. And so the more I will summarize that right there into anything that takes you way outside of your comfort zone, Mm. but you're able to grow comfortably in that to where when you're faced with it in reality you're good to go you know so i guess that's your stress induced or whatever the case may be but i would rather find my breakout moment or my freak out moment right out the gate in a controlled environment with my brothers around versus when it's go time and people are watching me and depending on me and it's not in a controlled environment so 
I think all of our first two skills, all of your skills need to be touched on. Don't get me wrong. Um, if they become easier monotonous, like I said, do a little bit of a workout in front of it or stress it up, go blindfold or whatever the case may be, just to make it more challenging because that's where when you get uncomfortable, you're able to make that repetition, that muscle memory count, especially that way when you wake up, it's just automatic. So right. that's what I would like to train on. <laughs> Man, you had me at get outside your comfort zone. Uh, if you want max points on any drill, just say get outside your comfort zone because outside your comfort zone is where you grow 100% max points. You are crushing the uh, get my, my cup out of the way as I pull the notes back up here. What mistake have you learned the most from? Question number four What mistake have you learned the most from in your fire service career? The mistake I've learned the most from was honestly not taking my fitness too seriously, and I'm glad I learned that right out the gate. Um, when I first got into it, I was, you know, quick story, I was about 275, 280 pounds. Oh, okay. I had some mass, but I, I was a big boy too at the same right, time. Right, just right. General construction. So now I got my certification. I'm able to be interior capable, and I catch my first interior job as a volunteer at this time. And I sucked down that bottle within like the first five minutes. It wasn't even right. funny. I couldn't do anything. I was not of an asset. And so I go back out and they swap my bottle and said, man, you need to get back in there. I said, in my head, I'm like, I don't know if I can. So I did, but the whole time I'm sitting there thinking, don't run out of air, don't run out of air, that I clogged right. my memory because I was not in shape to do the job. And so that was the mistake I think that's been truly pivotal for me to learn uh, off of is the true importance of being fit for the job and right. not just considering a, a side job or whatever to be sufficient enough. Dude, I'm looking, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting and looking again with the truth. I like it. Number four, it's hard to knock anything anybody learns from, uh, but it's the humility to look in it and say no. And then, to, and then to look back and say, look at what you've done to address it. And so without a doubt, number four gets max points, not just from the answer, but from your lifestyle. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? No, I appreciate that chief. Hopefully someone can take this as inspiration and it's not too late. Well, it's and the other late. thing is, is, is when you put yourself out there, you know, you got to live up to it and so mm -hmm. far so good. And I'm not saying that in a way like a challenge or anything. I hope it doesn't come across that way. It's just, there's a lot of people that won't put themselves out there because when they fail, it's a, it's a very public failing and we all right. fail. And so it, it takes a lot of stones to, to do that. And so max points for putting yourself out there. I got to give credit to y'all too, though, Chief, for that, because um, I say y'all, I'm putting you in the category of the, the national speakers, but you guys are, are really touching on the fact that it's okay to fail. It's okay Absolutely. to fail. It's okay to fail. So I know it's okay to fail. I'm going to yes. share a failure here. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. Um, thank you. Yeah. Final question. My favorite question. The one that survived the first five. Heavy fire and searchable space. Would you rather be assigned to the nozzle or first in on VES? I'm a VES all day, Chief. That's just a, that's one of my go-tos. I know we talked about this earlier. They all go hand in hand. I personally believe they're both equally important. You know, not everyone can have 30 people. Some of us only have three people, you know. Without breaking it all down, we've all heard the arguments millions of times already. But um, if I were truly given it, I would prefer to be the one to search and do the VES or search through windows, as Mr. McWilliams would like to say, just for the fact that you're, you're relying on yourself. You don't have a barrier to protect you from anything. You've got to, one, read the conditions, understand what's going on, just as much as you're able to see and ensure that you don't pass up you know, a uh, set filled lay that you don't see or something at the same time. So it, I'm not going to say it's more critical, but you've got to be more heightened and elevated with your senses, in my opinion. So I like that challenge. I'm going to do VES all day. I love, love, love uh, VES is the answer. There is no right answer, but my answer is always VES. So when people say VES, I lean that direction. But really, it's not about the answer because there's no right answer to that. It's right. what's your reasoning for it. And I love your reasoning for it. So you just crushed the five questions for firefighters going five for five with max points. And I don't think anybody's going to argue that answer or that scoring. So prioritize the search, says Michael Lataki. Great scrap, Chief, and my brother Christopher Snow. You crushed it. Um, I'm reading. I'm reading comments here. Uh, Dennis, well, Chief, I, mean, I don't deserve all that. Y'all are Chief, too kind. 
<laughs> Chief Dennis Riley says the comfort zone is where excellence goes to die. He nailed it with that. One hundred percent. Been running calls. Didn't get a chance to listen. Can't wait to hear the scrap later on Spotify. John Small, it is a good one. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Uh, Rob Ramirez, my brother, Macho, says, I made it. Great to see snow on the scrap. Nice job, fellows. Chief Riley has arrived. Uh, Tank Fired Up Morris is doing Tank Fired Up Morris things by being hype. Man, just a good all-around. Uh, awesome. all, okay, great scrap. Come. I, there was one from Fluger earlier. I think he said Max yeah. Daggums. <laughs> Max Daggums. <laughs> <laughs> he brought uh, that back, didn't he? <laughs> he's trying. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a good time, man. Uh, oh, yeah. Sandala said, great scrap. Can't wait to add you to the tribe in March. Something mm. happening in March? Oh, yes, yeah, sir. That's, uh, I feel like it's a trap. But, uh, yes, I'm, I just got accepted to go through the, the next class of Georgia Flames. And so it's something I, I don't take lightly. Um, there's there's no class like it, in all honesty. Just the content that it delivers about learning yourself in everything we've talked about. Um, you can't ever truly prepare for it. And when you think you are, you haven't prepared enough. And what they do with that is they – they tell you at the gate that you're supposed to prepare for a job, not a class or a training or a program. You need to come to us prepared and we're going to prepare you and we're going to test you mentally. And that's where I really started to understand the concept of they don't care. They as a citizens don't care if they're call one or call 36. They want your absolute best performance every time. And so those classes and programs really help you instill that. Um, but you got to seek it out and, you gotta be ready for it, 100. percent So that's that's where the senior the marches is coming, and so definitely looking forward to it again. Uh, but yeah, I, no, I'm, I'm excited, man. Hey, and here's the deal: no matter what happens, I either I, again, man, I go crush it, and uh, absolutely. But again, you're the man in the arena. You're stepping into the arena, so yes. it doesn't matter what happens. You've stepped into the arena, man. From here on out, man, you've already won. So I encourage everyone to try it. Absolutely. Oh, here we go. Wrapping it up. Officially, 176 scraps in the books. We, we made it happen, brother. Like I cannot, I cannot thank you enough for your perseverance <laughs> through this trial and tribulation of getting your message out there. <clears throat> thank you, Chris Snow. Man, Chief, I appreciate it again. Thank you again for coming out and spending time with us. And thank your wife, Mrs. Moore. I know you're going to be seeing this later on, but thank you so much for selflessly giving your husband to us. We as the American Fire Service appreciate it. Uh, she's she's my biggest supporter. Like you say, I couldn't do it without her, without a doubt. Uh, when the audience wants to get a hold of you, best way to do so? Um, Facebook, Christopher Snow. You know, the, the Rogue Tale Board, you can direct message me through there. Um, my number is not... Hard to get a hold of. A lot of people have it. It's 903-508-1100. So um, just call anytime. You know, my, my wife and I came to the conclusion early on that the fire service is my ministry. And I mean that, excuse me, full heartedly. Um, you can't tell a brother to holler if they need someone to talk to and you're not catching in on it. So if you need someone, holler. If not, I'm a part of next run. Reach Blake Sinet and all those individuals there too, man. They get it and they love you. Love it. Love it. And that officially makes it 176. So here we go with the final housekeeping. Coming up next week, one it, Grant Schwabe, man. This guy has almost had as big of trouble getting on the scrap as you have. But he's been patient and awesome and put up with my shenanigans. So we're making it happen. So Grant is next week. He's on Sunday, in fact. Uh, normally uh, do most of them on Monday or Tuesday, but he's on Sunday just to put up with everything that's going on. Following that, Sean Egan, then Cody Testrel, the the true mm. white well of the scrap. Been after him yes. for like two and a half years. So he's finally going to be on the scrap, provided I can land the harpoon oh, that's not a, great a few man. weeks from now. But he's committed, so uh, I'm, I'm excited. 2023 is in full effect with amazing scraps already just crushing January. As we move through the year, um, yeah, I'm about to start booking again. I, like, I was booked all the way through FDIC, and I'm getting ready to start booking on into the summer. So I saw uh, that when you posted up your schedule, like, daggone, this this man is busy. 
no no doubt about it and it's like uh just juggling just juggling yes. and then the internet likes to try and throw another ball in there to screw it up <laughs> so uh but no 100 percent. i'm getting ready to start booking so look look to your emails look to your facebook messages i'm going to be reaching out to a lot of I, I tell people man there's only 52 weeks in the year and there are thousands of firefighters that are scrap worthy and it's so 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 very difficult to even begin to figure out who and, and not to mention so many people I want to talk to again. And so right. it's tough. It's a it's a beautiful no, chief. beautiful problem to have. Yes. And so I'm not complaining. I just want everybody to know, understand that it there are thousands of people that deserve to have a scrap. And I'm trying to get to them one week at a time. Um new way to get stickers if you want them. Go to Amazon, rate the nine L's, give it a five star rating. And you'll get stickers. If you get a four-star rating, don't send me a picture of your four-star rating. <laughs> get out of here with that. Yeah, no doubt. Give it a five-star rating. Get stickers. Uh, always, if you if you uh, review the podcast, if you review the scrap and give it five stars, again, send me a screenshot, and I will send a st- I will bribe you all day long. Believe me, I'm not above a good bribe. Uh, love love the sponsors, Kehoe's, Affordable Drill Towers. Uh, if you're not a part of the Vigilantes, go be a part. And that's it, man. I've, uh, enough housekeeping. Thank you, my brother, Chris Snow, for overcoming all of the challenges I threw your way. It was Thanks for a great show. being on, Chief. Audience, thank you guys for putting up with me <laughs> and my internet and uh, throwing such great questions at the guest and making it such a good discussion. Thank you for tuning in live. You guys are truly what make the scrap special each and every time. Remember, mutts don't scrap. I hope The tones stay silent unless it is burning. Everybody stay safe out there.